what if I told you that you can dramatically speed up your edits in Final Cut Pro? In this video, I'm going to share my top three custom shortcuts that save me precious time every time. And I'll include a little bonus at the end. If you're not familiar with setting up custom shortcuts in Final Cut Pro, here's how. Select commands from the menu, then customize or press Command plus Option plus K. This opens the command editor. First, duplicate the default command set in the drop-down menu and give it a name. You can always go back to the default set if you mess up. To see which commands are attached to your keyboard, including the modifier keys, click the keyboard buttons. You can also view a list of available commands and their assigned shortcuts. Categories on the left can help you narrow down the list, but by far the easiest way to find what you need is to use the search function. Now let's take a look at my favorite custom shortcuts. First up, the most common actions, cutting and trimming footage. There are default shortcuts for these actions, but they're scattered across the keyboard, and you'll have to move your hands all of the time, which isn't very efficient. Let's fix that. Open up the command editor and search for trim. Map trim start to Q and trim end to E. Then search for blade and map it to W. By the way, when changing key commands, you might get a pop-up saying that the key is already assigned to something else. If it's a command that you use frequently, choose another key. Whatever makes the most sense to you. Now save and go back to the timeline. I have a long talking head clip here, which is an ideal test for our new custom shortcuts. Use Q to trim the start of the clip, W to blade the clip at the playhead or mouse, and E to trim the end of the clip. Look how much faster you can work now. All you need is some muscle memory. Next up, something I mess with all the time for B-roll sequences. Speed and retiming. Normally, you would select your clip, click on the retiming option, and make your edits there. Alternatively, you could use a command plus R shortcut to display the retiming options on the clip. That's already much easier, but it still involves a lot of clicking. Let's make that a little simpler. In the command editor, search for speed. Map retime slow 50% to 1 on the keyboard. Retime reset to 2. Retime fast to x to 3. Retime fast 4x to 4. Retime fast 8x to 5 and custom speed to the S key. Also, let's map retime reverse clip to the paragraph key. Let's save this and go back to our timeline. It's now incredibly easy to manipulate their speed. Reverse the footage by pressing the paragraph key, slow it down by 50% by pressing 1, reset it back to normal speed by pressing 2, or speed it up by pressing 3, 4, or 5. And to set a custom speed, simply press S and enter the percentage. Now, let's talk about speed. This is where it gets even better. Press R to use the range tool and select the range in one of your clips where you want to use a speed ramp. Now, all you need to do is press one of the shortcuts that we just created and voila, you're speed ramping. Isn't that awesome? Moving on. I often adjust the volume of my clips by raising or lowering it or silencing them altogether when editing B-roll footage. So let's set up a couple of shortcuts for audio. Open the command editor and search for volume. You will see that raise volume 1 decibel and lower volume 1 decibel are already assigned to the control, plus and minus keys. I suggest changing these to just the plus and minus keys for simplicity. Let's also map set volume to silence to the zero key, all nice and close together on the keyboard. Now it's super easy to make adjustments to the volume or silence the clips on the timeline. But again, it gets even better. These shortcuts also work with the range tool. Press and hold R to select the range in one or more of your clips. You can then raise, lower or silence the audio of the selected parts using the three keys we've assigned. Isn't that sweet? Hey. What about that bonus you promised us, bro? Right, you know how you click around Final Cut's interface a thousand times to show and hide windows? Not cool. There are shortcuts assigned to most of these actions, but in my opinion, it's a bit too messy. Let's simplify that. In the command editor, click on the Windows category. Then 
search for show height. I'll map command plus one to show height the browser. Command plus two to inspector. Command plus three to video scopes. Command plus four to show height the timeline index. Command plus five for the effects browser. And finally, command plus six to the transition browser. So there you have it. A quick look at a couple of my favorite custom shortcuts for editing in Final Cut Pro. If you want to be efficient, you need to start using custom shortcuts. Trust me, you'll save so much time. And you won't go bananas from doing the same clicks over and over again. Stay tuned for a couple more of my videos. And if you found this helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.